first of all, I have to explain while I'm sitting here, uh, first, because I thought you might not like to see my back all the time. <laughs> oh, there we are. Oh, well, there. <laughs> there we are. Well, that's very good. Um, and I'm sitting down because I have a, a back injury. Uh, I hurt my spine last week by too much dancing at the hump ball. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I didn't want to miss being here because I helped. And it, this is a very, very important issue for me. I, after her saying, it's like, follow that. How are you going to do that? But um, I, my perspective is a personal perspective on mental health. And if I start getting giddy, don't worry, I'll go in the other direction. Um, but it's a personal perspective. Um, I'm probably walking in water by now, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. But you see, you leave it to the rescue. Um, <laughs> so my, my, my perspective on mental health is not the normal one. Because for me, it hasn't been a journey with pain and suffering. The pain and suffering has probably been about with the people who've had to work with me. Uh, because I have a very positive experience. Uh, the positive experience is about being bipolar. Uh, but, and bipolar, as you probably know, you have ups and you have downs. And I'm very lucky that I have ups and very few downs. Um, but it does have an impact. And, I want to, and there's maybe some more pe people in this room like me, and therefore I can, uh, well, we can relate. We can just hang out together. So let me ask you some simple questions. What do the following people have in common? I'll read you a long list. Hans Christian Andersen, Winston Churchill, Martin Luther, Russell Brand, Frank Bruno, Art Buchwald, Rosemary Clooney, Francis Ford Coppola, Charles Dickens, Carrie Fisher, Stephen Fry, Mel Gibson, Graham Greene, Ernest Hemingway, it, the list goes on. I'll, I'll, um, Gustav Mahler. And then just get to the end of it, Frank Sinatra, Britney Spears, Dusty Springfield, Ted Turner, Ludwig van Beethoven, Vincent van Gogh, we already heard him tonight, Amy Whitehouse, Virginia Woolf, Catherine Jesus Jones, and Robin White. They're all famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've all got a bipolar diagnosis, which you obviously guessed. And the point about that is all of them were willing to risk the stigma that normally attaches to being having a mental health thing, or indeed being bipolar. My own diagnosis, I just thought I was eccentric for most of my life. Um, but there is a family history of bipolar. On my mother's side, my mother's family name is Groves. There's so much what I thought was eccentricity that I was going to write a book called The Eccentricity Gene. Um, in fact, one of, my, one of my ancestors, I read her obituary in the, in the Daily Telegraph, um, and she actually rode around the pyramids on horseback while an Egyptian was making love to her. Um, well, uh, no, Too much detail. <laughs> and the point about that is that I, my diagnosis had less spectacular arrival. It, was, it, it, happened, it happened in 2010 um, during the general election campaign. There was a general election then. And I was running a campaign, a personal campaign, against Gordon Brown. Um, and I was using tweets. So I was ahead of, ahead of Donald Trump. Um, and I was using tweets, and all these tweets were posted around on posters, and it was, nobody else was doing it with me. I took three weeks' holiday, so WGS didn't suffer. Um, and that by the end of it, I was completely exhausted. And the, the last day of the campaign, it was all over. I was lying in bed, getting up to have my breakfast, and I pressed, tried to press the key on my iPad. I couldn't even press the button down. I was so utterly exhausted. So I then went down to my doctor. The doctor sent me to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist sent me off for um, uh, four weeks' rest. Came back, had another meeting with a psychiatrist, and I was given a bipolar diagnosis. And I was, at the time, very surprised. I thought, well, I'm just normal. And what I normally do. And then I read later on some aspects of being bipolar. I quote, uh, um, it was clearly for me a manic attack, though I didn't see it. To speak in a rapid, uninterruptible manner have racing thoughts, display an increase in goal orientation activity. Sounds like me. No, they may feel out of control or unstoppable, or as if they had been chosen on a special mission, have often grandiose or delusional ideas. Yeah, if that's what it is, I'm one of those. Um, and the, you know, I began to think, you know, people are happy to talk, for example, about their sexuality in a business environment, why not about their mental health? What's the difference? Um, and I thought, because I'm lucky enough to have this particular form of bipolar, I thought this can be where the culture of silence can be broken. It's much harder about depression. People go around, people feel 
gloomy about that. But if you're bouncy and lively and you've got this sort of, this sort of manic behaviour, if you manage it, if it's managed, you know, you, know, you can talk about it. But the fact remains, 93% of the British public believe admitting to having a mental health problem would damage their career. So it's very embedded, this stigma. Now, a number of companies have already taken steps to tackle this. And one of them, uh, represented here, is Unilever, and all praise to Unilever. Uh, another, but some of the companies are quite surprising. They're not trendy, creative businesses. Boring old electricity companies. So, for example, EDF Energy, they have a program about a mentally fit program. Uh, they actually supply a CBT therapy to anybody in their workforce who thinks they need it. And what, happened, what was the result of that? Job satisfaction in EDF energy has increased from 36% to 68%. It actually doubled by having that one program. Another boring company, really boring company, accountants, Deloitte's. Not, they're not creative, are they? Do you know what Deloitte's have? They have, a men, they have 20 people in their company who are mental health champions. So anybody in that business can go to that, and the people know who they are, can have a private conversation about, with, why doesn't every business, why doesn't this business have a mental health champion? And I'm, I'm working on that. So there are people who are doing working in this area, and I believe we can learn from them. And tonight is, is, a, is an exchange of that. The, 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 for a creative business, there's a real relevance of bipolar, because bipolar, I'm happy to tell you, is strongly associated with creativity and pink shoes. <laughs> now, the Greeks, go back to the, the ancient Greeks, they got it all those years ago. Let me quote. They saw a clear link between what they call madness and genius. I quote from Plato, often quote from Plato. Madness comes from God, whereas sober sense is merely human. And you actually find, if you look at the data, that writers and artists are 30 to 80% more likely to be bipolar. So the connection is there. And, and modern brain science confirms what the Greeks discovered by intuition. Uh, bipolar and creativity uh, actually involve frontal brain activity, and the same neurotransmitters seem to be responsible for both mental illness and creativity. One's connected to the other. And manic behavior, that drive, for, which makes me get on, make, drives people mad. So you've got to support the Ideas Foundation, you've got to appoint engine on all of this that I, that I do. There's a quote, the manic, this is from a, another scientist, the manic drive of someone with bipolar disorder might provide the necessary focus and determination for genius in creativity. So there's, there's other uh, biological advantages of bipolar linked to mating success, but I don't think I should be boastful in going to this now. But, but the evidence shows that bipolar can be seen and is seen as a gift. And those who have it in this way, and, and there's many, I'm sure, should, should be grateful and not ashamed. Uh, but it's not like that for everybody. Let me say it absolutely clearly. And, and from mine, uh, who's, who's Sue from mine? There's someone around here. Uh, uh, Sue, you would know that for lots of people, Bipolar isn't such a great experience. It's actually, I've got, got a note here, it's the sixth greatest disability in the world. So I'm not saying that my experience is typical of all bipolar, but if you've got this variant of it, treat it as an advantage, nourish it, cherish it. And some companies do, uh, not just to support it like Unilever do, but Google and Microsoft, they look for people with specific skills as they see it. I regard our industry should call it the bipolar advantage. That's my little catchphrase, my branding phrase. And you know, smart, creative businesses should look for what, I, what is now called neurodiversity, where a range of gender, where, it, where, it, where, it, where gender and age and ethnicity, one of different sorts of neuros to help your business in different ways. If you start thinking like that, I think it becomes really interesting. And I want to, to draw attention to this. I want to eventually have this project. I'll just end with my little project. If I share, the more people who tell about a project, the more pressure you have to make it happen. And this is a train full of bipolar people. Uh, which, you know, and two carriages in the train are, are non-bipolar people. These are the CEOs of great big companies. So they're going to mingle with all these bipolar people. On the, it'll go to Manchester, this train. Uh, and because the BBC are up there, we get more media coverage that way. Um, 
And they're on this train talking and jostling, and, they go, and there's a conference up there about bipolar, and there's a, there's, there's a bipolar film crew, and there's celebrities, you know, we'll have, we'll have Stephen Fryer's The Guard, you know, the whole range of celebrities on the thing, and then we'll come back, and we'll make a film out of it, um, and that will start to be a way of getting some momentum, uh, and not, as opposed to shame, but pride in this type of bipolar. And I've got a great name for it. This is my, my final gag, not as good as your gags. It's the Bipolar Express. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. <laughs>